if we think about what the function functionality is for, we the user wants the the user ask here is to know what their balance their zec balance is worth in some fiat denom uh, denomination. Without loss of generality, we'll say USD. Um, so if they want to know the the price in, in USD, cryptocurrency prices can be rather volatile. Zec is somewhat less volatile, but you know, on, on a percentage scale, it can vary quite a bit. And so having a an up-to-date uh, understanding of the exchange rate is is important for from a UX perspective, but also from a if the user thinks they're sending ten dollars, but the price of Zek ten you know hundred X in the last two days, and so they're actually sending a thousand dollars. Um that's a that's a economic difference there. Right. So having an accurate value, we can't just bake in the approximate exchange rate the last time that we built the app. We have to have be able to fetch something live. However, if when the user opens their app, it automatically pulls the latest rate and shows what the um, what the price is going to be, that means if the app is doing that, every time the app opens, it makes a network request to one or more exchanges. So the mm -hmm. exchanges now learn when you're online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when, and specifically, they learn when you are using the Zashi app. They also learn your IP address, and with that, they can you know that can then be tied to other advertising met metadata, and be it becomes a you know a another data point in your general profile that is used to you know advertise to you slash surveil you on the internet in general. Um, so by breaking that, you know, if we can break that direct link, then there's still um, in that UX model of showing, you know, refreshing the rate when you start up, the exchanges then learn that some user has opened up their app to, to fetch the exchange rate, but they don't learn specifically who. Uh, it is possible to learn specifically who, but that requires significantly more adversarial power to do like traffic confirmation attacks on uh, and, and so on. What right. we did for this is um, we spin up a Tor client inside the app and instead, so, and then route the requests for the uh, exchange rate data from the exchanges over Tor. And what this does is um, breaks the IP address link. So what the exchanges see is a connection to their API requesting the exchange rate um, that's coming from a Tor exit node. Uh, and mm -hmm. so they don't know who I, which IP it is. And in fact, you know, there's only about, I think, 1,500 or so Tor exit nodes. So um, they'll offer, there will likely be multiple users whose connections happen to come out the same Tor exit node. And so you'll get, um, you know, connection aliasing and things there. Um, but, the, but the exchanges don't see uh, the source address of that request. They see the timing information because Tor is not a, Tor is a low latency anonymity network. So you... So they still learn when the request was made, but they don't learn directly from that request who made it, um, and therefore who who or what is interested in the current Zcash to USD price. 